versatile player. I can, let's see, my favorites would have to be uh, SF and Ember. Um, I mean, they're most played as well. Sadly, Ember is pretty terrible dispatch, but. Yeah, I know. I played him a couple games ago and he seemed just like super underwhelming. Yeah. But I pretty much play like everything. I don't really have. I try not to have like any heroes that I don't like or something, right? Because even if you don't like the hero, you should know how to play it because then you know also how to play against it. So. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm very comfortable in a lot of heroes. Um, <clears throat> some I play more in pop, some more in competitive. But. But yeah, yeah. The, the three that you mentioned, uh, Tinker, T and Quop, I mean, they're obviously pretty, pretty classic. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I just basically wanted to um, get better at mid. I feel like my mid is improving. Um, I mainly played safe lane. I spammed a lot of, uh, like, Bloodseeker and Medusa over the past, like, two years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... Um, I played a little bit of mid, but I was never really that good. I'd usually get like dominated in the mid lane. I see. So yeah, I'm just trying to like work on my mechanics and leverage that lead into helping like control the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so I mean, you have these three heroes in mind, right? Are you like yeah. set on them or? Is it just I mean, like... I'm always open to suggestions. I just, I've tried like OD, and I, I haven't really figured out, figured him out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't played that many games. I probably played like 50 games on him, but I don't know. I just feel kind of weak with him. And then yeah. I never really played SF. I know he's super strong right now, and mm -hmm. that's kind of like made me not want to play him because I feel like he's just going to turn into like a necro of like previous patches where he just gets like yeah, super nerfed. Like yeah. the best time to do it. That's obviously a bad feeling, so... Yeah, I get that. I mean, there's another thing about mid is like... Uh, the, the way you should look at a, a mid hero specifically, it, it also goes for, you know, any, any core really. Uh, but especially mids, is... There's essentially two, two roles you can fill in the lineup. Uh, you can either be the hero that the team plays around, so if some uh, your your mic seems a bit sensitive. There's like some noises going on. Is that better? Hello. I think it's I think it's better now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can either be the hero that uh, the team plays around, and you know, also the hero that has like a good matchup, uh, scales well in a late game, and eventually uh, carries the game, like close out the game. Uh, kind of like a OD, right? I mean, OD can be that hero. I mean, this the this the. Uh, the what I'm getting to, um, like maybe maybe the most ex I don't know. Like there there isn't any like very clear cut case. That's the thing. Uh, not not for mid heroes at least. Okay, like let's say TB is an example of this kind of hero. You could play TB safe or mid, but TB yeah. is generally like it's the hero you play around and the hero you expect to carry the game. Um, although even then, you know, like I mean, secret run support terrorblade so you know anything can work so the point is uh you're either that or you're just kind of like helping like enabling your team and you know having a more team oriented role um mm -hmm. and that's what you usually do when you know there's some counters to your hero and basically it's super important to be able to first like clearly see like the difference between the two uh i don't know modes or play styles if you can call them that Mm -hmm. um, and then also to realize when you should be trying to do which one and you know the strengths and weaknesses of either and of course this also depends a little bit on the hero like to what extent you can do this for example all right like ta is pretty pretty uh specialized in the sense that ta is generally the hero you have to play around you can't really make space with ta because all the hero really does is deal damage and not much mm -hmm. else so if ta has a bad game that means, you know, your damage is not very relevant, and that means, um, you're, you're not really much of a hero. Uh, so, like that's a case of a hero you really need to play around. 
Now, there are some other heroes where it's a bit more fluid, like Queen of Pain is a very good example of a hero that can definitely fill that role, like be the main carry, be the main DPS, but you can also definitely fill a utility role. Even if you fall behind with Queen of Pain, you can still buy items to have like a uh, impact on the fights and yeah. like create space, catch people, and... So. Is there... Okay, so talking about like, so... I feel, so from what you've explained, I I, uh, I take it that TA is kind of like a hit or miss hero, like she's kind of almost required to have a strong laning phase to be relevant, uh, because her her kit requires her farm. Exactly, uh, like, like farm, yeah. TA, you, you can't really, I mean, you can always, like, you always have options, but generally, like, how the hero works, and that's where OD is kind of similar, uh, like, those are heroes you don't really want to fall behind with, because... Like, it will happen. Like, sometimes you will be playing the hero, you will fall behind. That mean, doesn't mean the game is over. It just means it's not a position you want to be in. And yeah. in that sense, it's more of a hero that you generally want to pick later on in the draft in general because you want to make sure you have a good matchup, not just on the lane, but also, you know, like, game-wise. That the hero, like, if you do reach a certain point, a farm that your hero is actually strong enough to, to carry the game, basically. Um, mm. And, you know, again, compared to a hero like Queen of Pain, uh, you can kind of just pick whenever because, you know, depending on how the enemies respond, like, it, they might not counter you, and then it's a good Queen of Pain game, then you can still feel the, like, farm heavy role and, like, aim to reach some, some network where you can win the game. Or if they do counter pick yeah. you, you can still adapt and go for something else and, you know, be more of a... A disabler or more of a you know like enabling your own team like let's say you're safe and carry to then actually deal the damage yeah. and win the game so what are some what are some other heroes uh, that are similar to Quap in the sense that i know dk is probably one yeah where definitely. they serve more of a utility role where they're not required to have like an amazing start to have a big impact on the game yeah um dk is definitely one um DK, so here's a big difference, like, let's say DK and Death Prophet, they're both also like this, but one big difference that from Queen of Pain is that uh, they still require their team to play around them, because the main thing that those heroes do is push towers, mm -hmm. and again, they're not as versatile as the Queen of Pain, because uh, it can definitely happen that if you fall too behind, too far behind with those heroes as well, then you actually are not strong enough to pressure towers, and then again, the purpose of the hero, you know, gets kind of messed up, so... Yeah. Um, other heroes that are more similar to Queen of Pain, I would say, uh, uh, for example, uh, Pogna is actually one, <laughs> right next to the Quop. Um, it's not a very common mid-hero, but, you know, Pogna is definitely really, really strong, and it's, again, it's a hero that can... Uh, so something else that, you know, you might notice about when we talk about these heroes is that... Uh, like a hero like TA, uh, if she has a bad lane, if it's like two versus one, like you have to help her. Otherwise, uh, again, they, like if, if you lose the lane, it's, it's just there's not much recovery. And it, it's also you can't really do much on the lane uh, by yourself anyway. Uh, whereas you'll yeah, notice, especially like, if you're like a Viper or like a, or a, someone picks like a Venno or something. Yeah, something. yeah. Like if you just get really pressured. And <laughs> again, that's a big difference with heroes like. Um, Ranged, I mean, generally those are ranged and they have some kind of AoE nuke. So the combination of those is that even in a hard lane, they can still get some last hits and then also they have a way to catch up later on, you know, farming jungle camps, pushing waves, etc. Uh, Puck, yeah. Puck is another example of a hero like this. Um, Zeus is kind of a hero like this. Uh, <coughs> there's, yeah. there's, there's some more, like, one well, very popular is actually Gyro. Now he's kind of an interesting case because... Uh, he scales a lot better than, and he, like he deals more damage than a lot of those other. Like he doesn't really fill the utility role, but it's more mm -hmm. like it's really hard for the gyro to have a bad game because, you know, no, no matter how rough the lane is, when you get six, you're just very strong. You can get kills and stuff. Still apply pressure. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, this is all very theoretical, but. Uh, I'll, I'd say we, we just start with a certain hero and, you know, tr then branch out from there and, and see, like, um, because, again, that's where, like, starting with a versatile hero is a bit better because you're going to see, like, 
like we can start with co-op it's it's it's, uh, it's a good choice because then mm-hmm. you can just go for every game and then i can explain to you like when do you go for what kind of you know mm-hmm. build or whatever yeah whereas you know the more specialized heroes you just can't like there's gonna be games where you pick it and you're like all right it just doesn't work this game and you're kind of screwed yeah what are your how does how do you think tinker fits in to either of these categories yeah so tinker um definitely a hero that needs more farm it's uh it's it's leaning a bit more to the you know specialized because you also kind of need to have a good game with tinker uh big difference is that he's actually still a very, very strong laner and you know he has that aoe in the form of march so even if he's having a bad time you know he can still come back and you know through stacks and whatnot and he can also uh like he sort of feels he's able to fill a utility role by dealing damage it, it sounds a little bit weird but in, in the way that the hero works you know because of his mobility because mm-hmm. he's able to, to push waves and whatnot so so uh, that's another like very very defining uh characteristic of mid heroes like how how mobile they are uh because yeah. one huge downside of here like dk which even though he's, he's very popular right now um but why a lot of teams prefer to put him on off lane rather than mid uh because he's very immobile and like he can't really uh yeah he, he like either you're strong enough to force the tower with the team behind you, uh, in which case okay you you go and do that and then you can solve off from there, but at the moment you fall behind and you cannot force the tower, uh, DK falls very far behind in farm. Oops, did did you DC or Hello? I just heard the DC song? Uh, I heard a DC. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually had that problem. Um... With DK and with a DP, I was trying to get towers. My team wasn't really cooperating. I was, I mean, I felt like we could get towers, and I would just get solo picked off trying to get a tower, and mm-hmm. happened over and over, and then I just fell super far behind, and I felt pretty useless after a while. Yeah, I mean that's why, like personally, I also don't really like playing these kind of mids, in uh, unless I'm playing with like you know friends or a team or whatever, where you can kind yeah. of count more on each other. Uh, because again, yeah, try to rally people around to push exactly because yeah. you just can't really can't really count on them. So um, that's where heroes with it's basically two factors like uh, fast wave clear and mobility and combination of this. Um, like those heroes are ideal for uh, you know being versatile because that's something that's valuable in every single game, no matter what. And yeah. even if you're behind, especially in solo queue, I feel like exactly, exactly, it's especially solo queue. Uh, wave clear is generally very lacking not just in picks but also how people play like it's it's very i mean that that's you're gonna notice that that'll be one of the main things i tell you to improve on your game is to focus more on that which uh i mean everyone Shadow, can improve on that. Waves and then beating back up with your team once the enemy team splits up and stuff like that yeah basically just how how big of a priority in your you know mental checklist the shoving waves is because everyone okay. is like, oh yeah, it's it's good to do, but then you know they still prefer to farm three camps, and you know, yeah. so yeah. Um, but um, before we focus on Quap exclusively, I've uh, played around with the idea of Lena. Also, I know she's not very like mm-hmm. in meta. I don't know. But, I mean, um, personally, I really like Lena. I was, I was thinking about her to mention or not. Yeah, because she does actually kind of fit in the the in between thing as well because you uh, there's a lot, a lot of utility with her old nurse done and yeah amazing. and but it, it's also definitely a hero that if you like get a good start with lena and the team plays around her like lena is one of the best heroes to like solo carry the game because you have that uh, yeah, like, high attack range and you know high physical damage to actually take buildings with yeah so so in that sense lena is like it's really nice for again being able to go both ways and you know we'll <laughs> talk about like the different builds for that so yeah that can be another one um, I was always confused too, like when like when is it a good leaner quap game? Like I feel like the heroes are kind of similar, other than the fact of uh, quap's mobility advantage. But like yeah. they're both like good, like kind of like team fighting nukers, and I always got confused on well, when to pick either one. I mean, you said like okay, other than the blink, but I mean that is really like huge, <laughs> huge, and like the biggest deal. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean that, that's the. Like Queen of Pain is not. Like, what uh, do you ever want to pick Lena over Quap? Is what I'm trying to argue. Ah, uh, why well, you want to pick Lena? Okay, so you want to pick Lena against 
uh, basically heroes that are like a bit too tanky and heroes that are immobile. So basically against mobile heroes, like generally the more mobile heroes, the squishier they are. Like, I mean, that's like a, a general rule and, you know, it, it kind of makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, so against more mobile heroes, obviously, uh, like dealing all damage is great, but, you know, being able to match the mobility is kind of important. That's where Queen of Pain is nice because uh, it's, it's more important to get on top of them. And then once you do, like usually you have enough damage because they're not that tanky. Uh, and then yeah. in, in contrast with immobile heroes that generally build very tanky, that's where being a Queen of Pain, for example, is like, okay, you can get on top of them, but then they just man fight you and your damage output is not big enough. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you'd rather be a Lina. So, for example, some of the best uh, heroes to be Lina against would be, uh, let's say, Shadow Fiend. He's, of course, he becomes a little bit like pseudo mobile because of very high move speed. But yeah. it's still like a, a static here. But like take me, okay, take Medusa. Medusa is probably one of the best examples. Um, like with Queen of Pain, it doesn't really matter that you can blink around her. It's not to say that Queen of Pain is super bad against Medusa by no means. It's just how it functions. Like Queen of Pain needs to yeah. kite her, and you know keep distance, spam daggers, spam spells. Um, you know it's probably a good idea to buy control items and kind of ignore the Medusa, kill the rest of the team, and then. And then eventually, like, deal with the Medusa, set her up and whatnot. Whereas yeah. with the Lina, you have more the option of... Okay, Medusa is like this. It's very tanky, but it's slow. So you can just hit her with all your spells, and you can right-click her hard and actually, you know, try to burn through her tankiness. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, yeah, yeah I was just, like, really confused on that. But, but there's just, there's, like, a couple... Generally, the there's a few heroes that it's, like really bad idea to pick Lina against and it's a really good idea to pick Quap against for the same reason. For example, any kind of like path blocking, so clockwork with the cogs, uh Tusk with the ice shards, um Buck Dream I, really like spear, I hate playing against like Spearbreaker and Slaughter as Lina because they just like jump on you and you basically Yeah like, exactly like if you away. if you get caught as Lina and that's why that's another interesting point is like the that it's very that talent, uh, I believe it's at 15, where you choose between HP and Light Strike Array damage. Yeah. And it's like they keep increasing the amount of HP. <laughs> yeah. To try and get her to survive those initial uh, bursts. Yeah. And it's, but that's the thing, like a hero like Lina, it's the same, like you can see her as a sniper, you know? It's like if you get jumped, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, like if you have like 300 extra health or 800 extra health or 2000 extra health, like, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you get the point, You're right? You're going like, to get whittled down over time. and then If you get jumped, really like, the hero doesn't do anything. Like, you have no response after that. Like, that... Yeah. That's a more key thing. Um, when you think about, like, how the hero functions. Uh, like, some heroes want to be in the middle of the fight. Some heroes want to be outside of the fight. So, like, for example, why sometimes it's good to get that... Uh, and this also is the same with the playstyle thing. With Queen of Pain... Like the talents perfectly reflect the playstyle. So, if you are trying to be like the the DPS or as a co-op, you know, similar to how Lina should be, you take damage mm -hmm. talents and like uh, damage attack speed, blah blah. But if you're um, if you're playing more of a utility role, it makes more sense to go for HP because again, with with Queen of Pain, even a little bit of extra HP, like hundred extra HP, that might, you know, be the difference between like. Getting bursted or surviving, getting a blink off, getting a use off, getting some key active item or whatever. Whereas with yeah. Lina, it's like in order for the fight to go well for Lina, you need to be in a good position to, you know, land your spells and deal damage. And if you're getting jumped, that means you're surrounded that means you're in the middle of the fight. If you're in the middle of the fight, like it's it's pretty much over from there. And you know, you yeah. can be super tanky, but you can't like retaliate. There's no like, oh I survived the burst and now like and now what you know like you don't even if you have like some kind of weird build like none of the items you want to build damage items they don't allow you to reset a fight or anything like that only if you have shadow blade and they don't have detection but that's pretty rare but i, I mean like. but that's yeah like, i mean then you're counting on i mean mistakes yeah. but well yeah so that's where like uh hp talent on a hero like that kind of it, it serves a different purpose and it's not not how you're supposed to play it. Same with uh, 
same with like for example TA I believe used to have a I think they removed it by now but TA used to have like a so armor oh no okay she still does yeah TA has an armor talent and I never really yeah. understood the point of that either because you, there's no situation in which you want to be tanking or trading hits as a TA like without your refraction up so yeah so similar concept yeah but anyway that's a lot of theory if you want we can just get started with uh do you wanna how do you wanna do this the last lesson i did we did a replay analysis of mine yeah i mean that's Would generally you... the best thing um i see you right. have like a recent queen of pain game if you wanna if you remember yeah, sure. that game if that's good to go over uh let's see who did i go against against the uh, od yeah that'd be nice i actually like okay. od analysis do you do your share screen on your Discord? Uh, yeah, I'm going to share screen. And just real quick okay. before that, I'll link you. Uh, like with every new student, I make a document. So we kind of see like a overview basically of, you know, different aspects that are to, to look at. So you kind of get a okay. clear picture of what we do every lesson. Um, so I've divided them in brackets. Like don't, don't pay too much attention to that. I'll share it with you. Okay, on Discord, here you go. Oh, got it. Alright, so yeah, so we're gonna be talking about Queen of Pain, and here's like a bunch of things to look at. So it's up to you, but generally, um, mechanics would probably be a good place to start. Alright. Uh, so basically, just gonna... I notice I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty static with my camera usage as far as. The... Mm -hmm. what, what I'm like with my lane and everything I mean I, I'll check the enemy items and I'll check like the enemy carry items uh, but I never I notice when I'm watching replays or like live games of high MMR players like they their cameras going everywhere yeah <laughs> and yeah, like mine's, mine's pretty static mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's a big one because there's I mean we'll go over that. there's like a lot of information on the on the map at any given time so, so yeah, we can start with this for now, and maybe do a little bit about the basic uh, hero and items and stuff, like, because, yeah, when I'm talking about Queen of Pain, I'll mention to you, like, the two main builds that are to go for, and mm -hmm. when to go for which, so that right. goes... I usually, I usually have been just going one build that's kind of like a, a conservative build, I'd go, like, double null. Uh, and then all the like boots and all that wand into like uh, veil into orchid into yules. That was just my go-to. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's kind of a hybrid, like a kind of a mix, which yeah. you know it's not bad. And you know, there's definitely gonna be games where that's the best option. But uh, it's yeah, like the the I'll tell you like the two extreme ends, and then you can kind of see the. When you should go for which I show my screen, you should be able to see it now. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so on the one like one extreme end is basically uh, full, you know, like utility kiting and spread damage. Uh, so that would mean uh, strength talent, cooldown talent. Um, you know, the next ones is in either build you kind of want to get the the AOE and the the fear. I mean, they're just kind of better than the others, no matter what. Yeah. Almost no matter what, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so these first two are kind of crucial. So you want to get the strength and the cooldown because, again, like it makes you tankier. You go in. Uh, the cooldown is it's a small percentage, but it makes a very big difference because you're having a lot of actives. And the uh, yeah. the most general build item build is Veil into Yules into Shivas. Um, okay. Again, it like makes you tanky, gives you a lot of AOE control. Like mm -hmm. Shivas slow plus vision plus the dagger is really nice. Um, plenty of armor, pretty yeah, pretty tanky, survival. You can go in, you can be like the first to kind of scout the enemy team and whatnot. Um, you can be like a pseudo frontliner, kind of like a puck, 
and that build mm -hmm. is really nice when you have like a heavy damage dealer like say a, a terror blade or something on your team that build is great because you just go in you reveal everyone you draw a lot of attention and that enables the tv to like find his target and you know lay in the damage yeah and then on the other extreme you have basically where someone else is going in so uh and this depends on a lot of things like it's kind of kind of case by case basis but like let's say looking at this this game um judging from the enemy team you know both builds are kind of equally okay uh maybe slightly leaning towards the damage build more because utility against yeah, these heroes magic. yeah like utility against these heroes is kind of like they're all pretty durable and you know going into them it's kind of rough even if you have a lot of items because there's just a lot of disables that they have available and you generally mm -hmm. just want to avoid five on five against like these are the immobile heroes that i mentioned you know medusa od both not yeah. very mobile so going into them is kind of like playing to their strength and you know with the with the more dps oriented build uh you're focused more on you know mobility and splitting the map you excel more in 1v1 mm -hmm. situations rather than 5v5 mm -hmm. situations and that's mm -hmm. what you want against these heroes. Like, you want to split them up. Because Medusa with her team is obviously very strong. Medusa that's alone is kind of, you know, easy, easy to kite and control. And yeah. the next step is to look at your hero, uh, like your heroes, your allies, your lineup. And that's to see how much, uh, you know, damage, slash control, slash frontline, backline you have. Again, like I mentioned, the utility build is better if you have some kind of backline hero that you know, like, be it a, a Terror Blade or a... It can also be, I don't know, maybe you're playing safely in Queen of Pain, you have a Sniper, or, you know, any kind of any kind of carry that just kind of, yeah, wants to hit. Um, yeah. But in this case, you have a Necro and a Veno and an Earth Spirit. So Earth Spirit is probably, like, the, the hero that wants to go in the most out of, like, in Dora. <laughs> the whole point yeah. of the hero is to you know to get in the middle of everything. Um, Venal pretty similar, like you know as the Axel, you just wanna get get it off on as many people as possible and spam plague wards and slows. And Necro is also pretty similar, like he's tanky, he has a lot of heal. Uh, his like he literally has a DPS aura that and his first spell they both require him to be between enemies to be effective. So. You have a bunch of heroes that, that kind of group, like, want to go in to the enemy team. They're good at team fighting and stuff. So this will be a great game for you to actually go, not the utility build, but the DPS build. Which okay. is based around uh, the damage talent, the attack speed talent, and also building towards right click. Uh, which means Orchid, like, the, the most standard progression for that build will be, let's say, Orchid into into Lincoln's, you know, into BKB maybe, I mean, depends, Nullifier, whatever. Uh, Veil is Maybe. also optional, but... <clears throat> what about Sheepstick? Do you ever really, really get Sheepstick on Co-op anymore, or is it kind of... Uh, it's a bit, uh, like, a bit hard to fit in. Again, if you're going for a DPS build, you can go for Orchid Nullifier, which uh, it's essentially ends up doing the same thing, right? Except also giving way more damage. Yeah. Um... And if you're going utility build, uh, you're more 5 on 5 oriented, so you kind of want the Shivas. Like, the, the slow in the vision ends up being more valuable than a yeah. similar Hex. But but there's definitely, like, if the game calls for a Hex, you can you can get it. But rather on the on the utility co-op rather than the DPS, yeah. So, I mean, let's get into the game and see how it goes. And the other reason is that you have a, a Magnus with Empower. So you would really benefit from that as a right-click Queen of Pain. Uh, whereas the, the Venom and the Necro, they don't really benefit from it too much. Yeah. You're done too bad. Anyway, so this is just to kind of introduce the builds. Um, I'm, like I might mention a little bit, you know, throughout the game, like what you could have gone for and stuff. Some, some tricks some tips like also how to how to even start those builds and like because it starts from the main stage um like going for the veil is team wise it's not bad 
but it would be a lot better if the, the Venom got it instead, because then I end up going for some kind of hybrid. Like, I'm not sure why he has a pike. The four staff makes sense, always against clock, but like he's not right clicking, he went Ags, Arcane Boots, so it would make more sense for the Venom to have the Veil here. Right. And armor wise, uh, you know, if you're, if you're gonna die, this game is not gonna be because you lack armor, right? Because. Because the OD. They only yeah, have one right clicker and Medusa. Yeah, like all these pure damage. Um, they have a lot of. Like Medusa shouldn't ever be hitting you anyway. And if you do die, it's because you get caught by one of these guys. And again, armor yeah. doesn't help in that case, so. Like, armor is perfect against the agility the carries, because they more susceptible to the to the magic burst increase, and, and obviously yeah, they, they right-click hard, so... No. So, yeah, we're looking at the stage here. So I was actually kind of... I'll go back a little bit, because... I'm going to look at your player perspective. <laughs> So if you want for for this first, I mean we did a lot of like introductory stuff, but we can focus a bit on the lane, like because you mentioned you want to talk about the lane. Yeah. So like that can be the main focus here. So right, pull the crease back a little bit. It's nice. Try and get to deny. All right. So this is first uh, a kind of common thing is uh, a common habit like I see from a lot of the players is you need to. Like you need to always be doing something when you're waiting for a creep like in this situation it's it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen in fact let's go back a, a bit more even a couple seconds extra so the first melee creep dies from each wave now you pull the creeps here and already at this point you know <laughs> what's gonna happen right like these melee creeps are hitting your range creep i mean you made that happen that's the idea uh, wait, actually, you have your fair fire and backpack. Okay, that's a, that's a mistake. I mean, that's that's two damage that you're missing. Um, but yeah, so the many creeps are hitting your range creep, and obviously, like there's gonna be no other creep that dies at the same time. So both heroes' attention is on this one, and now he wants the last hit. You want the deny. But but so see how he's like pacing about far away on his side ground. Mm -hmm. And now he's moving in, because it's like dropping low. And your response is to just kind of walk around as well, and just wait for it. And then he hits early, commits the Astro, and then you're like, oh, okay, he was Astro. And then you're like, oh, well, now, he's, now that he's here, I can throw a dagger. So the reason, like, what, what you should do instead is already, like, you should be prepared. Like, look at how he's moving. And the moment he turns... The one, like already from here, you know that he's walking for the creep. So at this point already, what you should do is stand here and start hitting him. And then you give him a choice, like either, you know, because he can only, like he has a hit cooldown. So either he still goes for the creep, in which case you get a bunch of free hits in. Or he like starts trading harass, like trading hits with you, and then he misses the creep. But either way, your attack range is also higher, your attack speed... Uh, is uh, your attack speed is about the same? It's a little bit quicker yours, but uh, the point is your range is higher, so you can get at least one free hit in before the this creep even like gets gets low. And now the reason like this is bad that you're walking away is like you're basically afraid, but for no reason because you have higher attack range. Again, if he's walking towards you and you hit him, like you're gonna hit him before he's close enough to hit you, which means you're already yeah. like one one hit ahead in terms of the trade and you know that he's not even going for harass like he's going for the creep so now you like waste that hit like it might have been a deny but that's just because he hit too early but yeah the point is like is to imagine like what the enemy wants to do and be, be ready to to punish it at all times like the, the mid lane is all about trading hits and <coughs> you want to be like you want to be on top of it and if you're always like one step ahead you're gonna be coming out ahead uh in the trades so see what's happening here is pretty bad is because like your range creep dies uh, you don't get to the die and then you're tanking the melee creeps for a lot yeah you're starting to get over there and get my range creeps 
Yeah, you're really trying to get hitting. them, but then what he can do is also just hit you as well. Which, again, this time he fucks up the same way. He could have just hit you there, but he didn't. I'm, I'm gonna go back again. Uh, I don't know way to explain this. Is like It's kind of silly, but that is really what it boils down to. Is like, at any given time, when a hit trading starts, uh, I need to think of it this way. Like, if none of you like move at all, or do anything and just keep hitting each other and like using spells or whatever like who's gonna die first and whoever that is like that determines like whoever's gonna die first is the one who has to back off obviously right because they're losing yeah. the trade and in the process of backing off they can't hit back because they're moving you can't like hit and move so they're backing off which means the other guy gets to gets an extra few hits in for free like that aren't answered because the guy's running away so you can hit him or you're running away so he can hit you and those hits aren't a trade those are free hits so he's already winning the trade and then he gets an extra f few free hits in on top of that and then you you like you build from that advantage and then when one guy's low and the other guy's full like you can just walk up to him and you know he has to back and then you again you get more free hits and stuff like that so and that's how you leverage your yeah. advantage that's why the region is so important in this case, like right here, he should be keep. He should just auto attack me, right? Because he's only going to be tanking two creeps, and I'm going to be tanking five plus his, right? Exactly, exactly. You're tanking way more creeps, so if you auto attack each other, and he has the high ground, um, yeah. So you're gonna die first, you know, definitely. So you're the one who should be running, and that means he should just hit you, make you run. So I should just give up those two range creeps, pretty much, right, and just take those other three creeps to my tower. Or? I mean, you have you have a couple options, like either you. Uh, it, it's a bit of an awkward spot to be in. Um, like either you you forfeit here the, the the range creeps, or and you just like walk back to the tower to save your HP a little bit, um, and you know, try to get these last hits. Or like already now you should start running this way, and try to get these creeps to hit yours. Um, and what's gonna happen is that he's gonna maybe hit you once or twice, but at least you're not attacking these creeps and you by yourself a little bit of time uh, yeah. but, but then like I... if i could uh, draw aggro by attacking him to pull the two uh melee enemy creeps or wait those are my creeps yeah i mean what you could do is, is try to get these creeps to hit your melee creeps instead of you yeah, yeah. by walking this way but it's, it's kind of iffy and whatever you do you're gonna be taking a lot of damage so like it, it's not super bad like what you do here is you Take damage in order to be able to get a range creep, and you end up getting one of the two, and that is worth it in a lot of cases. So it's not super bad, uh, but it's also a risk. I mean, you're taking the damage for sure, and you may or may not yeah. get the range creep. So it's it's like a it's just not a situation you want to be in. So see, right now you have the high ground, and you're uh -huh. both just like he has slightly more creeps, but a lot of creeps are still alive. So here's where you wanna... Okay, first of all, this is like the best place for the wave to meet. But he has five melees and you have three. So this is where you wanna be hitting his creeps aggressively to try and push the lane a little bit. Or at least, like, you wanna keep the lane here. So And right now it's not even. So you should be hitting his more than you're hitting yours. But again, you're okay. just standing still and not hitting anything. Um, I notice they do that a lot. Like I always try and like calculate which heroes are taking the most damage, and I, I do that for too long, and I when I should just be like, yeah, trying to maintain the equal like equilibrium. A, a general rule, oh man, this astral bug is falling. A general rule <laughs> is like you never wanna like you always wanna be doing something on the lane. Like either you're repositioning, so you're moving somewhere, or you're hitting something. Um, and yeah, okay, so another like clear way to show why why that's so important is that by standing still you're basically showing the enemy mid what you're trying to do like it make it becomes very easy to read and this is like a classic again a classic mistake i see so much is like most mids have some spell right some harassment spell it has like a certain range and they they basically stand outside of uh like not close enough to cast that spell on the enemy mid most of the time because they're just CS. In this case, it's you with your dagger. You're standing outside of dagger range from the OD. And you're just chilling there. And then comes a the point where you decide, like, oh, now I want to dagger him. And now he starts sprinting towards him. 
and it's so easy to read he just backs off and that's where like by positioning like that you just make yourself like make it very predictable and by the time you finally get the dagger uh i noticed that he was trying to go up for that last test so i was like oh, i want a dagger him but then he astrals me but i still get my dagger off okay but if you notice that he's going for the last hit then you don't need to get that close because he's already moving yeah. towards you and yeah. uh you can also like generally just throwing a dagger is not really worth it you want to hit throw a dagger hit again because Again, like the dagger makes it so that you know he's slow, he's taking thick damage, he's not having a favorable trade. So probably he wants to back off after getting daggered. And that means you want to be in a position where you can get hits in after the dagger as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is that obviously, um, okay, maybe not obviously, but the like every hit has a cooldown, right? Uh, in the early levels is pretty big, so it's 1.22 seconds to, to get a hit off. Uh, before the next hit so you want to throw a dagger during that so that's why like you hit you're waiting for the next hit to get ready anyway so you might as well throw the dagger then and by the time you throw it with the animation you can hit again yeah so it's like the most efficient yeah, amount of time exactly that way you're making good use of the animations so and what happened here in the end is that okay you finally got the dagger but he just walked away no extra hits and you end up tanking his creeps a little bit. And the other thing is like, I mean, pay attention to the, like, look at the green circle of the dagger. This is the cast range, 500, I mean, it was 450, but whatever, 450. And I look at the cast range of Astral. Uh, he all, okay, he also just hit level three. I mean, let, let me go back 10 seconds. We both had it level two. Uh, I believe when he, yeah, it was level one when he cast it, so. So look at this. This is your dagger cast range. This is the astral cast range. So tell me, how is it possible that you get the dagger off, but he also gets the astral off? Like, why should that be possible? If you look at the range, it's literally half: two twenty-five on the astral and four fifty on the dagger. So the only reason he got close enough is because because I worked him too much. Yeah, you, you ran like right into him, and it also made the move obvious for him. So. Yeah, it's, it's a lot about like being quick and always reacting to how he's moving as well. And not, not giving unnecessary... Okay, so here... See, this was good. I mean, it is, it's good and bad. So here you realize that, alright, you have the high ground. Uh, his creeps are dying before yours because tower is hitting them. So if he goes to trade hits with you, like... I mean, the creeps are maybe a little bit less relevant, but it does matter that you have three and he has two. But really, the biggest thing is the high ground, and the fact that you're almost full, he's not. So right here, if you're trading hits with each other, like, he has to back. So this is a good moment for you to harass him. Except you only throw the dagger and you don't hit him even once. Like, you, you were the one who's backing off, actually, after throwing the dagger. And that's that doesn't make sense, because yeah. when the dagger connects, like, you're already at a big advantage. Like, he's the one who, should, who has to run. So it's like all these little things like who has how much HP and mana, what level, which spells, how the creeps are positioned, how many creeps for which side, who has the high ground, who has the low ground. This changes like non-stop. And at any given moment, either one of you has the advantage uh, in a, you know, hypothetical deathmatch of trading hits. Yeah. So recognizing who has that advantage and like when you know that it's not you, like backing off in time, when you know that it's him, uh, punishing it by being aggressive, that's how you can like get the the best harassing. So again, in this situation, uh, this this is what I meant with like all this time you're outside of dagger range. Here, you decide. Oh, I want to dagger him, and you start sprinting towards him. So from his perspective, it's really obvious, right? So he backs off. Now, yeah. what you do is that you keep chasing. Okay, you finally get the dagger off, but then he just turns around and he's in range to astro you. So, and again, your dagger has a 200 range advantage over the astro. So what you can do here instead, it would be really nice, is to, to stand here on the high ground. Like, you already made him run away. Like, look, he's not even close enough to hit creeps right now. 
So you already m made him go back. Now you can just chill here and you CS from there and you, you keep the wave. If he tries to approach, then you dagger him because he's running into you. Okay. And if he doesn't approach, well, then you're just getting free CS. Do you think there's ever a good time in lane to walk towards someone and dagger? Usually not, huh? It's like you should be using dagger, but you want to make sure that you're kind of always like pretty close, you know, almost close enough to dagger basically. So, like, close enough to dagger, but not close enough to get hit. Um, you know, in the case of OD, like his attack range is 450, but. Like, you just want to make it hard to read. Like, let's say right here, you're full, he's low. So all you have to do is, is walk up to this high ground to eliminate the mischance. Now, if he stays, then, okay, you're going to throw dagger, you're going to hit him. He has to back, because he's low. Uh, he's not going to stay, he's just going to walk away. In which case, okay, you don't have to chase him. He just, again, you, you, you farm. And, like, then you effectively zoned him. Now, Queen of Pain has a, also has a blink which you can use to kind of force these these uh, engagements, like force positioning. So, so for example, right here, when the moment you reach into full, you could actually just blink on him because he's going to have to run. So in this case, you blink right here, like right outside of the tower range and, you know, throw a dagger and just start hitting him and he has to run away. And until he runs away, you're going to get like two, three free hits in. Yeah. So you have you had an opportunity there. Now when he walks out of the tower range, okay, this also opportunity. Now this, uh, I think, yeah, here, when he st steps down the stairs, okay, now this is super good opportunity because on top of everything, if you blink here, you're also gonna body block him. Like he he can't walk through you, so he needs to take a, like a small detour, and he's also being slowed. In fact, this might just be a kill. Um, if he didn't have, okay, he has Astro, like he's gonna Astro you and then walk away, which which is fine, like then you force the Astro, right? Uh, he's yeah. spending mana and stuff, so. But yeah, anyway, the point is you're being on the aggressive, you're keeping him on the defensive. Like now, now you can't do that, right? Now he has like a moment of uh, safety because his creep wave is coming. If you blink now. I said, she didn't respond, but look what I said. You're tanking creep, so. Do you need a moment or? Oh no. So so yeah, right now he has a creep wave, and if you make this move, um, you're gonna be tanking the creep. So you're gonna like, even though you're full and he's half, you're actually gonna end up dying quicker because of the the creeps hitting you. So it's not you can't obviously. And now that the creeps are aggroed again, again you have the the chance to make a similar play. Yeah. So here you pull the name. I mean, at least you do have this the the habit of pulling this aggro, which is good. But but then you don't like. I I always pull aggro. Is that bad? Like almost every time new creeps meet, I almost always pull aggro. No, it's it's a good habit for sure. I mean, there's maybe a couple cases where it's not the greatest idea, but it, generally speaking, like it's a good habit. Yeah, because it just makes it easier to see us. But the problem is yeah. you don't. I mean, you don't really know why you're doing it, I guess, or at least you're not taking advantage. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're not, like, making use of, like, why it's good. So, man, these astros are so bad. So, <laughs> so let, let me show you what happens here when you pull this aggro. So, and this is why it's good. What happens now is that uh, your one melee creep is hitting his range creep, but it's actually range of the tower, so it's not even going to bring the, the creep to half, probably. It's going to die at the tower. Two of his melee creeps are hitting your ranged. Now, I mean, ranged are kind of the, the the more important ones. I mean, they give more gold, and I think they still give more XP, so maybe they don't anymore. But they give uh, 60 gold, whereas the medic give 40, so if you're going to focus on something, it's, it's good to focus on range creeps. Mm -hmm. And what this means is that your range creep is going to die first, so you have a like free deny. Either you deny it, which, I mean, that's that what should happen. You get a free deny, which is great. Uh, and then you also pull the lane back because the, the range creep deals the most damage. So if you quickly deny your range creep, um, like the enemy wave is not taking that much damage anymore and you you can pull the wave back to your high ground where it's like the best position. Yeah. Either that or he tries to contest. Now, if he tries to contest, look how far he has to walk. He has to almost come down the stairs and that's when you get a free dagger. Like, that's when, yeah, you see he's walking towards you, you know, 
he wants that range creep you know remember just like in the first wave he wants mm -hmm. the range creep and then you get a free dagger but when he's coming to you like you don't have to to waste time on that in the meantime you can keep csing or keep denying and controlling the wave or whatever yeah but here you like completely ignore that so no deny and uh you you run up to him and then he gets to uh not only do you not deny but he gets to deny his range creep so Okay, now another thing here. Um, the one time where you should actually be standing still not hitting <laughs> is here. Uh, and that's because... Like, there's one creep that survived. And it's actually a full HP creep, so that's really good for you. So, what happens if you just stay here and you tank the creep a little bit? Um, when it's one creep, you can kind of tank it. It's not too bad. If it's multiple, uh, what you can do is you walk up here. Like, on alongside the edge of the tower range. And you kind of just mm -hmm. uh, kite them back and forth, basically until your creep wave arrives. Yeah. Because what's gonna happen then is your creep wave is gonna hit him. You can help your creep wave kill it quickly, and when you time it properly, that's exactly when his next wave will come, and they're gonna meet here. And they'll be fighting again exactly your stairs, your high ground, best place to be. Yeah. But what happens now because you kill it quickly, your own attack is that boom they actually meet closer to his stairs. Anyway, it's still good. I mean, again, like, having this habit, at least, it's a, it's a good thing. Because the other thing this does is, like, it pulls the creeps closer to you, which, again, makes it a bit easier for you to see us. So here, you tank the, the Astral, for no reason. I just kind of underestimated the AoE, I guess. But that's, like, a pretty big chunk of, like, 120 yeah. HP. It's, like, 3 or 4 hits. And now what you can do, since he doesn't have the Astral, now you can actually walk up jump to him. Jump on him. Uh, I mean, in this case, not jump, because he's uh, now he's full. Like, he healed up. And, you know, he has 600, he has 900. Also has to do with, like, tanking the Astral. But now you can actually throw the dagger on him. And he is not going to be able to instantly respond with an Astral. So here you get ganked. Bit unfortunate in this room, whatever. This also where having the, because if you notice like how the lane is going, he rarely hit you, and if you ever took damage, it was from you being astral. So it would have made more sense to get the range up before the magic wand. Yeah. Okay, here, small small example. Go there for. So both just CSing. Bounty, which my matriarch will prize. Now here he's sprinting towards you from from this point already. He's running towards you with the idea to hit you, and this should be really obvious. So again, he this time he's at seven hundred. He's low mana. Astro is cooldown. You're at full, and you have the high ground. So how come you're the one backing off here? Like first of all, mm -hmm. you actually you let him get up on the high grounds. Okay, miss chance eliminated. Boom! Like you let him take one advantage away. You still didn't dagger or anything. And you let him get a hit off for free. Like completely unpunished. Now your range creep is dead. Now it's not a good idea anymore because uh, his creeps will be hitting you. But when he was running up, there was nothing like stopping you from uh, just throwing a dagger and hitting him from the high ground. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing you can you could have done is uh, when, when this situation you have this situation where you're both kind of waiting for creeps. Uh, and this, by the way, is like just using any AoE nuke. So in Queen of Pain's case, is the Scream. And by the way, the level 1 Scream is really not worth using because it's uh, 75 damage for 110 mana. It's like less than 1 damage per mana. Uh, so just really <laughs> inefficient. Um, so you kind of want at least level 2 Scream before you start using it. Um, but so, for example, what I would do right here is uh, when these creeps are low after the astral pops you know that he's uh, gonna try to contest like gonna try to deny right he's either gonna try yeah. to get the last hit or deny so i don't like he's gonna hit either his creep or your creep probably a bit more likely your creep but whatever uh the point is you have an aoe nuke so you walk here you scream you get the last hit and you harass him at the same time and then you throw dagger you start hitting him again he has no astral 
he has to run, etc. Basically, Queen of Pain is a hero with like a lot of aggressive potential, and you're kind of like really taking a back seat here in this lane stage, and you know letting him get away with way more than he should, right. and letting him do yeah. I think a lot of this is a result of me uh, mainly playing safe lane farming carries, where I'm used uh -huh. to being like protected and not be learning to punish uh, like mistakes. Yeah. So I was just focused on like highest GPM possible in the shortest amount of time. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean a lot that's, of this is that, new to me. That's still relevant. Um, and it's interesting you should say that because again, there's like kind of two different mindsets you can have when it comes to this. Um, if you're uh, remember, yeah, this this goes all the way back to what we we're talking about. Like, are you the hero that's being played around, or are you yeah. the like enabling your team? Which again, in Queen of Pain's case, both can be relevant. Um, but uh, let, let's give an extreme example of like a a hero that's kind of enabling the team. Like, I think I would say Sky is one of those. Uh, like Sky Rat, it's not really a common myth. I mean, that's that's why because it's kind of situational. But Skywrath is like an anti-mid. If you're playing Sky, your uh, your job is to kind of fuck with the enemy mid, right? Because that's what your skill set allows. Like, you spam the nuke and you make the lane <coughs> annoying for him. Uh, you, yeah. you can't really come back. Like, you don't have any AoE. You can't farm. You're not going to, like, go into the woods and farm some stacks. You can't out-farm anyone. So, as a Sky, it's better to slow down the enemy mid than it is to speed yourself up. Or like, it's better for you know, you to make him miss last hits rather than trade last hits or like secure your own last hits, because that doesn't matter too much for you. Like as a sky, you just need a couple items. You don't or in levels. Um, so as a sky, you would pretty much always be playing like super aggressively. Um, you know, maybe you take some damage. You're gonna forfeit some last hits, whatever. But your your job is to like zone the other guy and make him have a annoying lane. And then you know, let's take the other extreme. If you're playing a Terrorblade mid, you almost don't care about harassment. All you really care about is get as much CS as possible. And, you know, yeah. don't take too much damage in the process. So you can, like, not get zoned. Stay on the lane. And then when it comes to Queen of Pain, it's kind of, once again, kind of in between. Um, because even if you're going for, like, a greedy-ish DPS build, where you're focused on getting a lot of farm from the lane, uh, this harassment stuff is still is still something you should be doing because it's like you're helping yourself like you're giving yourself space to to last hit easier like that's why Queen Pain is good at last hitting because not only her animation her damage and etc but also because uh, she's able to force these situations where it's hard for the enemy mid to contest those last hits mm -hmm. um we don't have a whole lot of time left, but we can go for a couple of quick one v ones if you like, to kind of yeah, sure. demonstrate these concepts. So I think we should do some, uh, you know, like some games where you're the queen of pain and I'm whatever hero, and some games where like I'm the queen of pain and you're whatever hero. I mean, maybe we should do queen of pain OD because we were just watching it, and it's uh it's. Decently balanced matchup, I suppose. Okay. Like Queen of Pain should have the advantage, but but OD is like, yeah. I mean, let's just play. It's uh, it's only really about the first three, four, five minutes somewhere there. After that, it doesn't yeah. matter. Um, so yeah, we can start with yeah, basically the same. I'll be the the radiant. I'm radiant. I'll be OD, and you can be the block. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with like one ones, but you can write uh, to to, oh, to, get to, to spawn a lich. Who's gonna pull you tangos? 
I'll, I'll write the uh, command in all chat. You just. Okay. I could hear your caterwauling from clear out on the rim. Ah, uh, this is sort of stuff. Like. Oh, whoops. Um. Fuck, how is it? <laughs> oh my god, sorry, okay. Is it dash create hero space switch in console? Yeah. Uh, and just in chat, I don't think it has to be in console. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I am writing it, I just have all chat muted so I can't see it. Alright. Alright, I got it. Yeah. And then. I thought it's not showing okay. or something. Yeah, you spawn the queer and pull yourself tangles. Okay. Do you always get double null? Like, in lane as a quad? Yeah, okay, that's the other thing I was gonna mention. Um, it used to be the case, always, because null gave 6 int and 3 damage, so it was the most efficient. But it got nerfed, so now it's just 7 int, no extra damage. And, you know, people are still kind of doing that, just out of habit, mostly. But I've been experimenting a lot with the next most similar item, which is uh, Rob with the Magi. So it's about the same cost, like 15 gold less, pretty much the same. And it gives 6 int instead of 7, so 1 int less. But here's a crucial thing. Like, again, if you're going for a Veil, which you should in the utility build, then getting the Nulls is fine, because you're building into Veil. But if you're going for a right click build, you are not. You generally don't want to buy a Veil. So you end up selling the nulls, which is just losing gold. So instead, yeah. what I like to do is just buy some robes. Um, Build them into treads and then into your... Orchid. Exactly, you get a quick treads and you can also make work with them. Um, usually I still go like null and then instead of a second null I buy robe. But I've also been trying like just starting with robe. It's not bad either. And then you end up not wasting anything. See here, I was kind of in that situation. I made it like a little bit of a circle. I tanked some of your hits, but then I made your uh, made a creep hit my medic creeps. Yeah, was that was that good that I was right clicking yeah, there and was, saw that you're coming that towards? That was perfect. That was perfect. I started right exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, this is not so good because right now you see I have way more. Uh, melee creeps than you because of what happened earlier, so... Okay, this was a huge mistake by me. Two tower hits, thanks. A little bit laggy. Ah, yeah, sorry, actually, completely didn't think of because I'm mean, playing your server with your NA. So. I got one, 150. Okay, we'll switch servers next time. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sure it would be a similar result regardless. I'm just used to playing. I live in Seattle, so the US West server is actually in Seattle, and I get like six ping. It's so amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, but it's, it's for you, so we'll do that next round. Oh shit, I forgot to activate the courier. Alright, okay, we could do like one more wave, but from here it's kinda. So you see, right now just I have more HP, which means notice how I'm standing like right between the creeps. Because I know that you can't really. If you get close, like I'm gonna hit you and you have to back. So by standing right in the middle there, I'm preventing you from really getting close. Yeah. I also went for a different build than the OD you were facing. I'm skipping Astro. You are ranged. Why? When? When do you? So you skip Astro because uh, I thought you because went orb against melee opponents because you can get more free right clicks. I mean, the thing is, Astro at the first few levels, it's there's a bit more that goes into it, but. 
at the first few levels Astro has melee range, so against ranged heroes, like if they play properly and keep their distance, you won't even get it off. Yes. So there's kind of no point. So if I want to trade with you, I need Orb and Aura to do so. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you want, we can just uh, go for next. I think advantage is pretty big at this point. Plus the, the ping, I mean, we should fix that. Are you going? Do you do the same thing with OD as far as that rogue? As far as what? As far as building the rogue? Uh, yeah, I like it on OD as well, because you won't, always want treads on OD, obviously. So, and you pretty much never want veil on OD. So I was actually <laughs> doing this in the old patch as well before they nerfed. Veil. Unless you're, unless you're cheesy sometimes. No, I mean there are very few games, specific cases. Alright, let, let's go remake and go for next. Okay. I'll host again in the video. Did you want me to host? Is that what you said? No, no, I'll, I'll, I'm hosting. I'll invite you again. Okay. Alright, so. US West, you said? Or East? Yeah. Okay. Alright, let's go. Cool. When do you would you ever go Aquila on Quap? Or is that just gimmicky? Mm. I see people, some people doing it. Like what's the point? If you're going against like a right clicker mid with a lot of like a agility mid or something or I mean yeah, um, it's not really like against which mids would you really do that? Because again the the point of <laughs> Queen of Pain is not really to trade hits. So like the Aquila for me at least makes more sense for heroes that either are gonna build it into you know pike so od ta i mean obviously most agis can build it into yeah. pike and some ints like od or viper um it seems really inefficient for 965 gold yeah that's the thing and the only other cases are maybe for like a. Mm, like pushing to help you like push? I don't know. I saw a game with a co-op, it's like 18 minutes long and she has she has an Aquila. Yeah, no, on, on Queen of Pain definitely, uh, I don't... The, the thing is, you can also sometimes get it on OD even if you're not gonna build an early pike or you don't plan to build a pike. But the difference between OD and co-op is that you don't really get many small items on OD, right? Because you... Um, on OD... You know, you generally like you, what you get treads, wands, then you go into four staff. Like you don't really buy a ton of raindrops. You don't really. You don't really buy bottle ever. You don't really TP like don't need the TPs yes. active that much because you're kind of chilling on your lane and stuff. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. you have like a lot more slots to work with with OD. Whereas with Quop, I don't see how what kind of build you're gonna go for if you're. Like if you're getting an Aquila, what so you have like no Aquila wand and then Raindrop boots DP and then you have no slots. So then the moment you go for the next item you're kinda Yeah. Okay, there is something. Is there any mid hero that Quap just completely gets ruined by? Um, completely ruined? Not really, because again, you, just, you have so much range, you can always take a bit of a defensive approach to the lane. Uh, mm -hmm. there are some mids that you know can. Like, what's our worst matchup? Like by Bird or TA maybe? Uh, not really. Like both of those are like Viper can be annoying. I don't. know, It's a bit hard to say because. Like, uh, nowadays mid is rarely like a true 1v1, and it's, it's much more about taking the roamers into account as well. I bring bad news. 
Uh, personally, when I'm against Corp, like you have a couple options. Like, because Corp's laning strength is a lot about the, the shadow strike. So you could pick a hero that has a way to remove it. Uh, a lot of those are melee though. So like a uh, life stealer, jug, legion. Like legion is a good example actually here that can dominate Corp. But that's pretty rare for mid lane, yeah. Yeah, it's it's rare, it's rare. Um, no, it's, it's that, that's why it's like a such solid here. There's like no clear, nothing you can really call a counter or anything. Uh, personally, I quite like Pogna. Uh, I mean, Pogna is a strong laner in general, anyway. And also, there's the advantage that uh, Queen of Pain has no nothing to stop the the ult, so he can basically never blink on you. Because then he just ult him and he has nothing to break it with. Yeah. So see, what happened there was actually there were no creeps around. But you still have to back because eventually my creeps would come. Yes. Yeah. And then... And you'd have to get, you'd get free right clicks because I'd be running away. Exactly. The delay is definitely significant. I'm almost having yeah. to get used to <laughs> it. Yeah. Pretty hard. Yeah. Feels like I'm playing on land. I'm like literally fighting. <laughs> so, yeah, this game I did go for Astral. I'm gonna get two points in Aura, and by the time I hit level 4, that's when I can actually start using my orb. So, here you got the dagger, but it was a bit late. And no extra right clicks. And I managed to get the Astral off anyway. So I secured the, the last hit. And my creeps ran under your towers, so you have to go like all the way back. So I did like a mini block here just to make sure they meet exactly on the high ground. And this gives mm -hmm. me a nice. Okay, you're spawning nice, like pulling it, so now. It's not quite there yet. That was a good deny. What can I do about it? The, the range creep you just denied of mine? There's not really much I can do about that. Yeah, not much because... I mean, the thing is I... It's like a... It's a consequence. Like, I already had the lane advantage, then you pulled it, and then that was like the result of that pull. See, right there, you should hit me instead, because there's no reason to try oh, to deny. Yeah. Like, I'm the yeah. one that needs the creep to go low, like, that's my creep is the objective, I need to get out soon. Whereas, you're not in a hurry at all, because your wave is coming sooner, because it was on your high ground, so... You can just hit me there and make me go back. So, notice, like, a pattern, every time your range creep is getting low, I'm, like, sprinting up to you to try to get the astral off, because it's, it's level 1, it's melee range. So you only get the, the Shadow Strike off, but no extra hits, so it's not really... I don't get punished too bad for that. And, and then I just get the, the range creep. Security. Can you push me back like that so that you have a better chance of denying my creep? Not just that, but I'm getting free hits, and like those are three free hits that you didn't answer. Four now. Five. And that's How most... Can I it's mostly because what of the high ground. Like those hits mostly happen because of the high ground. Especially now that it's night time. Like. I see now that I'm like you're so low and I'm so full, I can just do this. And you just have to back all the way. And I can sit between you and the creeps. Casual chilling here, make sure you don't get close. Yeah, all these all about the hits though, you can't let me get that many like unanswered hits in this game. Dark wings. 
You only have one Q point? Yeah, until now, yeah, now I have. It just took a second. I bring bad news. It was not your fate. Yes. Yes. Darkness advances. So even though you have more range to work with, somehow I'm still like getting a slightly better like trade in terms of backing off and yeah. I mean this is a bit silly, but I just don't want tower hit. It's kind of worth it because I know you can't punish it anyway, and I'm not really reliant on the astro anymore. Wait, wait, I'm still not sure what happened. <laughs> so now you saw that I need to be careful. So I'm actually a bit surprised you didn't blink on me there. What I did was I already clicked the Astral on you, so I would like, cast it instantly when you blink. But then you used Astral? I didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I clicked it on you and like my hero starts running. So then if you blink next to me, I will immediately turn around and cast it. That's how it works. But it ended up not being necessary because you didn't. I was actually hoping to get enough mana for my ult. I was gonna right click it times and then try and ult. Uh -huh. I was like 30 mana shy. No uphill miss chance. Okay, now your blink is on cooldown. Uh, boots are down, so you're dead. Yeah, I'm dead. I usually punish that when, like, when I'm playing against ODs. Like, usually when I see them use their astral, then I'll like use that as an advantage to mm -hmm. try and kill. Same with Quap, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and also when you don't have the blinking, you should be aware and like play a bit more defensive. I sh yeah, I shouldn't be trying to go for last hit still. All right. Well. All right. Cool. Yeah, you're cool actually giving me a. A ton of information on when to when to be aggressive and when to be passive in mid mm -hmm. and I, like I just want to like lastly point out though uh like the laning stage it's it's important to have like a certain baseline of skill you know to improve like because you don't want to get too far behind every lane every, every time mm -hmm. you're laning stage but it isn't something that like a lot of people kind of overhype it as like super important it's not really like you just need to have again like a certain level and from there it's much more important like there's like a million other things throughout the game that have yeah are much more likely to end up winning you games and stuff whereas just being yeah. really good at the lane so so that's what i mean like like it, it's obviously good to work on but you know don't like uh over overdo it because okay. there's like very big diminishing returns let's call it that way like at a certain point it's, yeah because you could always just feed your gold yeah, like, because I played against a ton of people that, you know, like, on the lane, and this is even, like, at lower brackets, you know, like, some, like, let's say, low divine or even some ancient players, and, like, on the lane stage, I'm like, whoa, this guy is so good, you know, this must be, like, a, a smurf or something. He's, like, doing really well against me on the lane, and then the moment the lane ends, they're, like, completely lost, and I'm like, okay, the, this guy has no <laughs> clue what he's doing, and, you know, it's, yeah, the game is easy. yeah. I know there's there's been games where I've gotten completely dominated in lane like by I was like a storm spirit or something and I just retreated to the jungle and farmed for like 10 15 minutes and then I ended up carrying the game like super hard. Yeah, yeah. Exactly so. Um, so the in the in the Google Doc that you sent me, we kind of worked on like the mechanics part, right? Yeah, we basically talked about uh, mechanics, aggro positioning, uh we talked about like when do you like take an aggressive stance on the lane and, and stuff. Uh, when do you play defensive? How do you punish like harassment, etc. Um, yeah. yeah, we didn't get to do. I mean, camera stuff. Uh, we can only do that for replays. That's the only time I can actually see your player perspective. Yeah. I'm interested to learn like a lot of the game plan uh -huh. stuff, like in the next okay. lesson, because I feel like I know it's good to push when you know the enemy's just TP, and when you know they're pushing like as five to just push as far out as you can into like 
a side lane and then TP back to defend or keep pushing depending on the situation. But I'd like to learn like more about that because I feel like that's really important and that's a huge, yeah. huge thing, no, especially in like lower MMRs. You're right. Uh, you actually, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Like that is the one of the most like if there's something you know that's gonna win your games, that's definitely one of those things. Like one of the most yeah, because it splits the enemy. Like the someone's gonna be like, oh crap, I don't want to lose this tower, and they're gonna TP back, and then if you exactly. TP back, then it's a five before. And but the interesting thing there is that like the on the other end is when you're in a bad situation. Like when people say, you know, like oh they came as five to our high ground, and then have this and that pushing hero, you know, with a pipe. Well, there's nothing we can do, you know, like what what could I do in this situation? And you know, and the interesting thing there is that when that happens like that then really there is nothing you can do but then it's too late and that's not the mistake that you know you can't do anything then the mistake actually happened like a minute ago like the fact that you allowed that situation to happen because you weren't pushing a different lane uh, and you weren't yeah. reading the map and seeing what's about to happen so i mean that that's really interesting stuff and for sure we can do that for next time um okay. just if you get any kind of good replay uh which basically means like a that doesn't matter if you want or loss, but just has to be a somewhat even game, ideally. Okay. And we can like a longer game that could have been swung either way. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, and then we could take a look okay. at that. All right, cool. And I'll add one more question before we end this. Um, sure. So yeah, there's a lot of fighting for mid. Um, and when I don't get mid, I kind of just want to play offline because it's usually up for grabs. Uh -huh. um, is there any is there any like offlane here you can like throw me at? I mean, I. I had a lot of success with Bristol just because he creates so much chaos in lane and he requires supports to stay there to babysit. I know he's shit in like high MMR, but like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he's just like a super noob hero, you know. So um, I don't know. I was just kind of think of like a hero. Okay. For offline. I mean, that's pretty interesting. That could... There are definitely like a couple heroes that work well both on mid and offlane. In fact, uh, Queen of Pain offlane definitely works uh, depending on the matchup a little bit. Yeah. Um. But you, you could kind of do pretty similar stuff. Like, it's just your timing is a little bit slower, but you can still do yeah. well in the lane. And, you know, eventually you can catch up and, and do similar. Um, uh, Gotta mention the Pugna again. I mean, I mentioned it, like, it's, it's a specific hero. If you never played it, then it doesn't really count that much, I guess. But, yeah, but Pugna is definitely also a very strong offlaner as well as a mid. Uh, Puck, okay. Puck as well. And then, I'm really bad at Puck. <laughs> I'm right. really bad at Puck. <laughs> okay, then, you know, no need for the puck, but uh, then some other offlaner as well. Tiny, Tiny's probably a pretty, yeah, Tiny's another good mid-end offlaner. Just great okay. all-around hero, pretty much good in any situation, so. Alright, cool, yeah, I'll try, uh, I've only tried co-op offlane, like, a couple times. Do you usually go utility build if you do co-op offlane, just to kind of contribute um, something? To most the of the time, yeah, but if you do... If you do get like a good start, like maybe the lane is not that hard, you know, they have like some kind of weak yeah. carry, only one support, not try lane and stuff. And you get a bit uh -huh. of a good start, you could definitely uh because the cool thing about Cop off lane, like they nerfed the side lane's uh snowballing potential because of the change the changes in the side trap, right? They removed phase boots, they removed yeah. uh, a lot of stuff. But uh in the case of Queen of Pain, it's actually still really good because you can now complete shreds. And robe is actually one of the few items that's available in the side shop. So yeah. you can potentially you now buy like a fucking triple robe. I mean, no, that's silly. Better buy treads. But you know, you can buy treads, you can buy more robes and all of that from the side shop. So. And just have a huge right click on the supports. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And transition to a pretty quick orchid. And from there, you can like start pressuring, pick offs, farm, etc. Kind of like you would do with the mid quop. Cool. All right, man. Hey, awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for all the stuff. And this message, figure out a time for like the second lesson. All right. Sure thing. We'll do. All right. Thank you so much. All right, man. Have a nice day. Yeah. See you ya. too. All right, boys. Thanks for watching. That's it for today. Two coaching sessions. I'm going to be uploading all this stuff. Sorry for people that want to watch stream and stuff but yeah I'll definitely be streaming tomorrow probably some games as well alright see ya